Earthworms spend most of their time in soil. They move through soil by taking it in their mouths and the soil passes through them and out again. Their bodies absorb food matter from the decaying organic matter as it passes through. Excreted waste products are known as castings. Earthworms are considered as consumers because they do not produce their own food. Their digestive processes further break down decaying plant matter in small parts for use by decomposers such as bacteria and fungi. Decomposers chemically break the organic matter into nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium which are in a usable form for plants. In this way, earthworms and decomposers facilitate the constant recycling of nutrients in nature. In Activity 9, students inspect earthworm castings found in their terrariums and learn how earthworms fit into the food chain. This activity will take about 40 minutes. The vocabulary introduced is castings, decompose, and decomposer. From the kit, you will need two magnifiers for each team of four and the team's terrarium. You will also need the student sheet from Activity 7, Part A. Duplicate Activity Sheet 9 for each student. Distribute the terrariums and magnifiers to each group. Have students review their observations of earthworms from Activity 7. Ask if anyone saw the earthworms or their tunnels during the terrarium observations. Where were the earthworms in the terrarium usually? Kathy, what do you think earthworms eat? Well, I'm not sure, but it must be something in the soil because they just hang around down in that soil area, so there must be some kind of food down in there. Okay. Since earthworms are usually found underground, they are most likely to get their food from the soil. Remember that soil is composed of tiny bits of rock and dead plants and animals. Therefore, earthworms get food energy from the organic material. Earthworms eat their way through the soil, taking the components of soil, absorbing the food, and then expelling the waste. Write castings on the board and explain that castings look like little piles of dirt on the soil. Kathy, do you think we could find any castings in here? I don't know, where do you think I should look? Well, you might <clears throat> try lifting uh, the leaves up or close to the soil anyway. Okay. We'll see if we can get the anole to move up that other part because I don't want him jumping out. We're gonna explore the leaves under the leaf litter first. Oh, I see something really good right there. There's an earthworm, and I see all of these little things that, that look like little balls sitting on the leaf. Do you think those are castings? Well, there's evidence enough because the castings are, or it looks like it's brown matter, brown material, and it's close to the earthworm. Why don't we take some out and look at it oh, I think that's a little what they closer? Are. Let's see if I can move the worm so I don't disturb the castings. I wonder if they're feeding on some of those leaves. Hmm. Whoops, I think we, we brought a, a friend along. Oh. Yep. <laughs> it's quite active. Hmm. Now I wonder where they're gonna go now that I've taken their leaf. Okay, let's, let's take a good look at this right here. Hmm. Well, it looks like dirt, but it is a little bit different from dirt um, in the way that it's formed. 
One of the things we can do is if, let's see what dirt really feels like. So let's take a little bit of dirt and rub it between your fingers. Okay, let me see if I can scoop some out over here that might not have anything that looks like castings. Okay. I'm going to put this okay, let's clip put back on so he doesn't try to get out. Okay. Now, why don't you take the soil and rub it between your fingers, and let's talk about how it feels. Well, it feels kind of gritty. Okay. And crumbly. All right. Yeah. Let's take the castings now of course and feeling. see how look at that, that might be you want to look close at yeah. it does it look like little lumps it does it looks like little balls how interesting that there's right there and no other place on the leaf now you said that the soil felt gritty maybe we could test this to see if it feels different from the soil than we might know it was not the soil so what i'd like okay will this be kind of yucky well, students might think it might be yucky. Uh, we're certainly going to have them wash their hands. But what you might do is invite them to use some rubber gloves if you have those available. Okay, but I, you're I, not going to feel the texture as well through the rubber gloves. Okay. I, I don't think I'll use them. All right. Okay, so why don't you pick it up and, and <clears throat> rub it between your fingers and tell us, describe the difference. Mm, it feels kind of smooth and it kind of rubs together easier. It's not quite okay. as gritty. All right. Students will conclude that castings are the waste products of earthworms, soil after it has passed through the earthworms' bodies. Write decompose on the board and explain that decompose means to break down into smaller pieces. Dead plants and animals are partially decomposed when organisms such as earthworms eat them and expel the remains. Earthworm castings felt smoother than soil because the particles in them have been broken down into smaller pieces by the earthworm's digestive process. Write decomposers and explain that decomposers are organisms that break down the dead plant and animal matter into even smaller pieces. Some examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. Decomposers might only be seen through a microscope, but the role is important for use by plants. Next, construct a food chain beginning with grass to cricket to anole. Kathy, how should we add an earthworm to the food chain? Well, that is a tricky one, isn't it? Because it really doesn't eat any of the things that are up in the top of the food chain that we just constructed. But I guess the grass does die and go down into the soil, and so I guess it gets food from that. So I guess we can draw an arrow from the grass down to the earthworm when it dies. And then I guess the cricket, if it dies, it's gonna go into the soil and the earthworm is going to help to get it ready for decomposing. So I guess the arrow can go from cricket down to earthworm. Mm -hmm. And the same with anole. I guess if the anole does, it's going to go into the soil, and the earthworm is going to, going to end up passing that through its body. So I guess the arrow can go from anole down to uh, earthworm. Remind the students of the term nutrients, phosphorus, potassium, and explain that nutrients are the building blocks of all living organisms. Did the plants grow better in sand or in soil? Uh, in the soil. Okay, and that's because soil provides the plants with nutrients, more nutrients than sand. Earthworms eat the soil and put out the castings to make the soil much more usable to plants so that they can get the nutrients that they need to grow. Do you think it is beneficial to have earthworms in soil then? Oh, I think that makes it very beneficial if they can kind of help get rid of dead plant material mm -hmm. and animal material. And make it more usable for plants. So Johanna, how is it going to fit in the food chain, earthworms? 
Well, earthworms are actually scavengers, and so they will uh, in turn help break down that organic matter so it's more usable to plants. Students conclude that earthworms play a role in the food chain by aiding in the decomposition of organic matter in the soil. After passing through the earthworm's digestive system, the organic matter is ready for decomposers such as bacteria and fungi. Decomposers break down the organic matter into nutrients necessary for plant growth needed by first order consumers. To clean up, return terrariums to the original classroom location, collect magnifiers and return these to the kit, have students wash their hands, review pages six and seven in the Delta Science Reader, energy in an ecosystem.